see you again. Have fun. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Daniel Becerra. I'm the co-founder and managing director of Buffalo Grid, um, which is bringing um, power, electrical power and internet connectivity as a service to the off-grid world. Let me see if this works. So the mobile phone is the most successful electronic device in history, and it's the only one that has been able to reach the most remote and low-income regions of the world. And this is due to a very simple business model. Network operators reach these regions, set up their infrastructure, and run an affordable, reliable, convenient service that everybody wants. Following that example, we have uh, done what they did for telecommunications for electrical power. So um, the problem is huge. There's more than one billion people without access to power. But by, by this year, it's been calculated that 750 million will have uh, access to a mobile phone. It's a, it's a funny figure because it means that they're covered by the network. It's not actually the amount of people with a phone, but there still are hundreds of million already there with a mobile phone. Um, so what do they do at the moment, all those millions of people? They commute sometimes up to for two hours to reach the nearest uh, points of power where they will pay the most expensive electricity in the world. Um, it's very common to see these kind of shops in sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia. Um, and it's very interesting to see how sort of the global market has balanced to about 10 p. That's what they pay for their mobile phone to get charged. Now we have data that in the UK you can charge your phone uh, for the whole year. So if you like 365 times for 50 p. The same 50 p will just buy you five charges in these regions. Um, so addressing that pain, we have created the, the Buffalo Grid Hub, which allows the end users, these um, uh, rural habitants, to pay for electricity they need by simply sending a text message. Uh, the units are connected to a solar panel. That solar panel generates electricity that we store in our units, and then um, we sort of locked it away. So nobody has access to, the, to that power until they send the text message and we receive that text message which became the payment and key to unlock that power. That allows us to have an administra a remote administration services that drop our, our operational cost and allow us to reach these very remote communities. Um, what, I mean, when, when you see the, the situation, you will see as well dozens of companies trying to tackle this, this problem. And most of them, if not all of them, what they're trying to do is sell a product to these users. Um, and of course, you have a very price sensitive market. So, well, very uh, successful companies have get really clever with the payment mechanisms. Now you can as well pay by text message and that sort of stuff, but towards ownership. Or uh, some other companies, they just have dropped their prices and doing so, dropping the quality of their products and pretty much destroying the reputation of solar panels in these regions. It's, it's quite impressive to see when you reach these communities with a solar panel, they just don't have any faith on that. And while power needs are increasing, um, solar panel sales are, are even dropping. So what we believe in Buffalo Grid is that people need all access to power not ownership of inefficient, polluting, or expensive uh, power solutions. So, oops, yeah. so we provide our units for free to local entrepreneurs, and they um, will sell the electricity to their communities, and they will share in the profits with us. Um, the, the units are as remotely administrated, and we can track their performance and and another part of the business model is that paying by text message allows us to identify the network operators each user is with. So this becomes a fantastic tool for market acquisition and, and market retention for the network operators, which are in a very, uh, again, price sensitive and very unloyal market. So everybody is in a contract. Sorry, everybody is pay as you go in these regions. Nobody is in a contract. And we have data that a normal user will go of 12 SIM cards per year, so they're literally just changing uh, carriers every month according to whoever gives the, the, the best price. So if we engage with the network operators to say, come on guys, pay a little bit of the power of these guys and they will stay with you, 
it, it, it's not actually any aid that they're providing. They're actually just enhancing their business because we have data as well that indicates that when you provide power to these mobile phones, they, they, the user will increase their airtime consumption in around 10 to 20 percent, and that means just about two billion dollars business opportunities just in sub-Saharan Africa. And this is very, very simple because these guys are using their phones as you do when you have 10 percent left in your battery, just for that call that you really need to make, just for that call that you're really expecting. So whenever you have power available, you will just use your phone more. So what we say to the network operators, well, pay the power and they will use more of the phone. So 10p of power becomes a few quid of airtime consumption. And, and this can be completely uh, targeted to their users. It's not like you open uh, the power and, well, let's see who, who gets charged. You can only charge those phones within your network. And, well, it's when, whenever we say that we provide these units for free in rural markets, everybody says, well, they're going to get stolen, they're going to be broken. How do you deal with that? So we have fantastic routes to market. Our uh, co-founder, a seed founder as well, is a coffee trader. And he's the head of a company that's been trading uh, coffee in Africa for the last 150 years. So um, we have access to more than 20,000 villages across 13 nations. And it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty straightforward. We, coffee comes out, units come in. And, and that's how we've been deploying our units in Uganda, in coffee cooperatives that have kept them really safe and really uh, working really well for the last uh, almost two years now. And, and we, in a manner of speaking, we have a captive audience of uh, coffee farmers. So a coffee cooperative where we deploy in these units, which we have access to thousands again, it's a place where um, 200 to 500 uh, farmers will come together and gather all their coffee and clean it, and all that sort of stuff, uh, to sell it to the traders. So we can charge, and we've been charging all these phones. Now in India, where we're starting our deployment in a month, uh, we partner up with a company doing banking inclusion. So we already again have a network of 15,000 agents that are providing these banking services. And, um, and uh, last year, no, the, the beginning of this year, I went to Brazil in a, in a trade mission to explore a market that is a very good example of the limitations of the grid per se. So in Brazil, in the Amazonas, you have more than two million people um, living in the outskirts, just without power and access to, to services. And many times when we face investors in, in India especially, they say, well, everything is going to be connected in a few years and so on. And we certainly hope so. But in places like the Amazon, you really don't want the grid to reach these places. That will mean destroying the rainforest to reach a couple of hundred people. But that doesn't mean that they have to be without power. So the centralized power solution could be the key to really fulfill the millennium goals of universal access to electricity by 2030. Um, so in, in, in numbers, our business model is, is straightforward. We deploy these units that will have a manufacturing and deployment cost of around 400 pounds. They start generating revenue with the first charge. Um, and every, every quarter, they will be generating around 300 pounds, which um, we'll, we'll share with the, with the local entrepreneur, around 50-50. So the units pay themselves just over six months and then become profit generators for three years, which is the regular lifespan of our units. And the only thing that we need to replace after that time is the battery, which is the weakest link. But that's, again, another uh, good feature of our system because batteries are really nasty waste. And all the rest of the companies that are targeting this market, you re rely on storage. And that storage is being given to these people and never thought of it afterwards. So we keep a, a track on the health of the product. So whenever the battery needs replaced, we just send, send the battery and it's replaced. And so, so yeah, and then what happens next? Yeah, we have a, a fantastic team that can really deliver this um, uh, difficult challenge. One, when we started the, the project, it was almost three years ago with a bicycle generator, and, and it broke straight away. Uh, so what we needed was to really work on the, on, on the reliability of the units, and Damon, that you can see on your left, um, has more than 10 years experience in working in satellites and Formula One cars, things that have been designed pretty much to uh, fix remotely. So for instance, our, our units in Uganda, um, every little technical issue that we have had in the last 22 months have been fixed 
from our office in, in London. And then um, the next challenge is the environment. It's a tough environment, heat, humidity, all that sort of stuff. But Stefan, next to Damon, has been working in deploying electronic components successfully in volcanoes and underwater installations. So a little bit of um, heat and dust doesn't scare him. And we get great traction. We presented the project at the UN at the beginning of this year as well. And we were presenting alongside Google, who were all, uh, talking about the um, Open Internet Initiative. And that's when we start thinking of, yeah, well, why can we not provide internet as well? If you have the power and you have the connectivity, it's just a little bit of an upgrade to have a, a remote Wi-Fi hotspot in, in these rural places. So since then, we've been working on the development on, of this internet connectivity and the units we're deploying in India next month does have this, this connectivity. Um, what we see with this connectivity is the creation of a whole ecosystem. Once you have power and you have internet, then a lot of services can plug in. We, we're working in fantastic uh, projects with a, with a company, for instance, that are doing interactive educational content for uh, random schools. So our power runs the projector, our connectivity allows the download of their, of their content, and all of a sudden you have these schools running interactive contents in rural Rwanda. Or uh, we're working with a remote medical diagnosis that will prevent lots of uh, critical conditions if they're diagnosed early. And, and that's just the beginning. It's, it's, again, we're really excited of this completely new ecosystem that will allow millions of people to reach services that they have never had access to. And well, and, and in that incitement, we, we partner up with a with UN-based global business incubator that is really keen to help us bring our services to more than 150 nations. So that's Buffalo Grid in a nutshell, bringing power and internet connectivity as a service to the off-grid world. Thank you very much. <laughs>